Sunday at 6 p.m. We get to talk to you about relationships. These are very vital. Interpersonal relationship, relationships and marriages at work and within between two friends. For some weeks now, we've been talking about relationship in the area of manipulation. When one party seeks to overtly or covertly influence somebody to do things the way he or she wants it. And in manipulation, it could be indirect, deceptive, or abusive. The most important thing in manipulation is an attempt to make you do something you would otherwise not have done. And the singular person that benefits from manipulation is the manipulator. So in a relationship, you are manipulated at your expense for the motive. In manipulation, the hidden agenda is the benefit of the manipulator. Sometimes manipulation, like I said in our previous broadcast, could be veiled with hostility and abuse. In that case, the manipulator seeks to control you and to have power over your life. Earlier on, just before this particular edition, I gave you 12 questions you must ask yourself. And I told you, if six turn out to be true, then you are being manipulated. Can you remember them? Like you sometimes feel confused about what your partner really wants. Two, you feel your partner takes advantage of your giving. What brings about these feelings is the way you keep on giving and your partner never gives. You give time, he never gives you time back. You give money, he rarely gives you money back. Not because he doesn't have, but it could be a gold digger. So when you are taken advantage of, or you are confused about what your partner really wants, the red flags ought to go, ought to go up that something is wrong. And each time you do something that pleases your partner, the positive feeling never lasts long. That's the third one. Between a, within a short period, you find that the person that was happy with you has suddenly changed. The fourth one is when your partner has a very strong impact on the way you think and the way you feel or the way you act. Each time you want to act, you have to ask yourself, am I going to hurt him? How will he want me to act? So you become a robot, teleguided and controlled by your partner for his own good, not for your own good, not for your mutual benefits. Because I've said over and over again, manipulation is never a win-win. It's all about the other party winning and winning and winning at your own detriment. That's why whenever you're in a relationship, you could be a man or a woman, manipulator is gender-free. It could be either parties. Don't think I'm talking about men or women. It could happen to anybody. The fifth one is sometimes you feel you are trapped in a relationship. You want to go, you cannot leave. You feel as if you've been held down, trapped in a relationship that you once loved. Number six, you feel you need your partner more than your partner needs you. So the relationship is one way. If he leaves you, you feel empty. That means you are vulnerable. You can be manipulated. Why? You want to be loved. And so you feel you need your partner more than he needs you. And some people may not take advantage of it. But the, 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 the manipulator looks for people that feel like this and they prey upon them. The sixth one is that no matter how much you do for your partner, 
You feel that you are never good enough. No matter the dress you wear, the way you make your hair, the qualifications you continue to amass, you change your walking steps, you can't walk, you learn how to speak good English, you do all the makeups you can put in the world, use the concealer, use everything possible. You constantly feel you are never good enough for your partner. Or number seven, you feel your partner does not really understand who you really are. What is he trying to do? Make you who he wants. Number eight, you feel that your partner is always ready to get you to say sorry, but he never says sorry. If any of these turn out to be true, and more than six are true, you need to go through this all over again. There are some things manipulators use. I've mentioned them over and over again, and I will not hesitate to continue to say them. They are called the strategies of the manipulator. Lying, to bribery, to forcing you to do things. makes you always feel guilty, even if you're not. For instance, you promise to come at 12, and you call at 11, and you'll not be able to make it at 12, and he says, still come anyway, and you go there at quarter past 12, and he goes ranting, see you, you're always late, I'm sure on the day of your wedding, you go late, I hate having a relationship with a late comer. Now, you've already told him you'll be late. What does he do? He pushes guilt on you. You are talking to him on the phone, and the lines are bad, and he says, there you go again. You don't want me to talk to you. You don't even want to talk to me. That's why I said, hello, 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 because you don't like me. Guilt feeling. Hey, where are you now? Oh, my parents. You like visiting your parents too much? Are you a baby? Whenever you say you're with your parents, you make me feel I'm having an affair with, a, with an underaged girl. Why do you always go to your parents? I hate it. I don't like it. Now, for goodness sake, these are your parents. But it makes you feel guilty about going to your parents. There are many other things I can mention. You've gained one kg weight. I didn't even know. You might not have gained any weight at all, but he just sees you and he tells you they are beginning to grow weight now. They are beginning to grow fatter. You are putting on weight. You are adding weight. And you stand on the scale and it's the same 65. And you tell him, he said, well, you just look heavy. You see, I don't like fat people. I don't like, what is he trying to do? Push you to feeling guilty. Another weapon of the manipulator is what we call foot in the door. F I T D. Foot in the door technique. This foot in the door technique is commonly used by salesmen. You know, when you put your foot in the door, People find it difficult to lock the door because if they lock the door, they bang the door, they will hurt your foot. In the foot in the door technique, the manipulator makes it very difficult for you to tell him no. How does it work? He wants you to sleep with him, but he knows you will not sleep with him. So he makes an initial little request. I want to know how you look without your clothes on. I said, no, but you already know how I look, you know. You can see me, I'm beautiful. No, I just want to know how you look 
without your clothes on and you refuse and he gets angry and he walks out of the house but he continues to push when will i see you without your clothes on oh no i don't like it i'm a child of god i don't believe in sex before marriage i don't like this thing and he says just for you to let me see the beauty of god and you are denying me of what I'm going to have at the end of the day, just to see your beauty. After a while, you cave in. And then you remove your dress. And it sees your beauty. Remember, a small request that leads to a bigger one. It sees your beauty and it says, oh, can I touch this idol, this goddess? And it touches you. At that point, you find it difficult to say no because you've conceded to a small request. And in piecemeal, he gets you to bed and he has sex with you and you regret ever doing it. How did he get his way? By foot in the door technique. How did he do it? He asked for something small and with time, he goes on to ask him for something big. Oh, he says, can you visit me? And you say, oh, no, I don't want to visit you. It's getting late. No, just 30 minutes. Okay, just visit no 15 minutes. Just come in, drop, let me see you, say hello to you, you know, and blow you a kid. Mm, give. And then, that's a small demand. I say, look, it's 4 o'clock. Before I get to your place, it'll be 5. You say, well, 5 is still okay. You come in at 5 and you leave at quarter past 5. Just 15 minutes, a foot in the door technique. And you get there at five, you end up staying at five thirty, you want to go, and he says, Why don't you wait till seven? There's a lot for us to discuss. You wait till seven, and he says, Where are you running to? You can go to work from here. Foot in the door. He has started with a very simple thing. He was going to, and he has gone to a bigger one. This is what consistency does. Now attempt for you to be consistent. You find yourself giving in to foot in the door technique. Then we have the door in the face technique for manipulators. You know, it gives you a large request. Like, let's make love. That's a big one. And you say no. And he now tells you, okay, if you can't make love, let me kiss you. Now listen, I won't deny them the bigger one. You are forced to accept the smaller one. Salesmen use this a lot. You want to buy a car or you want to buy something and it's maybe like, um, maybe whatever, 500,000 naira, no cars goes for that. Let's say 1.5 million. And you tell him 1.2 million. He refuses. After a long bargaining, you tell him, okay, I'm not going, I want to go. He says, okay, you wait, let me talk to the boss. And he allows you to sit in the car, the right color, the right model, and you love the car, the air conditioning is working, everything is perfect, and then you want to sign a check. He says, but just wait a minute, let me ask my boss. He picks up the phone and tells you, sorry, my boss insists on 1.5. In fact, he says it's supposed to go for 1.7. Why did I give you 1.5? He said, no, but we agreed for 1.2. That was me. I was doing you a favor. But I spoke to the boss and insists on... He has rejected you. Both of you have agreed on 1.2. You find it difficult to say no to one point. Power of reciprocity. Because somebody is doing you a favor and has refused a larger request, but considered a smaller one. When he calls his boss to say his boss insists on no, you find yourself in a very difficult place. Because you have sat the car on the car, you have tested the car, and you love the car. You end up saying, 
all right, tell him I want to pay 1.3. He says, no, the boss insists on 1.5. You end up buying the car. So initially, the salesman made a big request of 1.5, and he knew you would refuse that. You continue to make a smaller request. He accepts a smaller request. But he comes back to tell you the boss said, how does it work in a relationship? I've given you an, a good example already. He tells you he wants to make love to you. And you said, I'm a child of God. I don't believe in these things. And you turned it down. He asks for a cheaper one. And says, can we just hold ourselves? Having refused the larger one, the door in the face means you end up saying yes. This is not consistency. This is reciprocity. It came down a bit. I'm forced to come down a bit too. The last one is the low bell technique. Bell as in the bell you ring. Low as in L-O-W. In this case, you agree to purchase something at a given price. And the man is ready to jack up the price. He comes in at first with a low price. And you go nearer and he tells you, this same thing, the, the buyer asks you, how much is this thing? You say 1.5 million. And he tells you that, okay, do you have the one that doesn't have an air conditioner? You say, yes. And you say, 1.2. You say, okay, without an air conditioner and alloy wheels, so you can get that for 1 million. He says, get me that. He has gone for the low bell technique. And when you get me that for 1 million, he now tells you, he wants to write a check, he now tells you, I have only 900,000 euro here. He had already made up his mind where he was going. And all of this play in relationships. I said manipulation is a technique used by a manipulator to um, twist you to agree to what he wants. And in most cases, is at your expense. And who loses, you lose. A manipulator does not do a win-win stuff. You must lose and you must win. And at times, they take their time. They could be following you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and many social media platforms. And they are studying you. And that's what people use when they play the, the email fraud or Facebook fraud. Because they've seen all your pictures and they know people that are your friends and they delve into your friends of friends, they delve into your friends, and they mine, M-I-N-E, they mine your data. They know when you, were, when you were born, they know you went to university somewhere, they know you went to high school somewhere, and then they come across to you like somebody that is so familiar. They put a call through to you, and they start saying nice things about you. Because they've watched you and they've been following you for so long, they know the colors you like. They know, for instance, you're an architect. And they, and they tell you, you know what, I love paintings. And I love drawings. I love landscape, you know. When I see a beautiful house, I stand in amazement. This guy knows you're an architect. He didn't tell you that, he already knew. So he's going to use that to get you out to like him. Why? He likes what you like. He has saying that you're a good cook. Each time on Facebook you put your latest dish, your latest recipe, and it comes and tells you, look, I look forward to marrying a woman as a good cook. And she says, wow. It's all part of the big game. And then I mentions your village to you and says, you know, I like people from ABC town in XYZ state. I say, well, that's where I'm from. Oh, that is God. That's a manipulator for you. 
Why? He's done his homework. And manipulators are patient. They pray, P-R-E-Y. They pray on people that are vulnerable. It is you that invite the manipulator. Like I told somebody earlier on today, where there are no buyers, there are no sellers. They study you and they know where your weaknesses lie. You are desperate for love and they come after you because they know that widows are looking for companions. Widowers are looking for someone to take care of them. And then widows are looking for men with money. And they come like men with money. They may not have a dime, but they know that this fits into your dreams. Why? They've checked you up. And they've arranged themselves in a way that you will fall. They know, they can know what you like. They know your colors from looking at your Facebook page. As well if you're a social media freak, always posting your pictures on Instagram and all your latest things are there and they know what you like. They come for you. Now, what's the relevance between this and manipulation? People that manipulate, they prey. They are predators and they go out for people with, and they are armed, A-R-M-E-D, with information about you. And they get this information from you. So they may study you for 18 months on social media. And when they come for you, they have, a, they have all your pictures lined up somewhere. And they know everything about you. Is social media bad? No, it's not bad. It's great fun. But be careful because a manipulator uses your weakness your vulnerabilities to get you. Each time you put your picture on Facebook, you say, oh, I'm lonely. You are calling them. Oh, it's cold today. The rain fell today. I wish I had a man with me. You are inviting somebody already. And guess what? They never leave you until they have wrecked you, either financially, emotionally, or psychologically or even physically why it's not a win-win game it's you must lose and the win I say but come sir how does this affect marriage oh yeah you can marry a manipulator and you won't know it why she came into your life through manipulating the process but you saw her as very intelligent or him and very intelligent. He knew you already. And when you are married to a manipulator, he can make you do or she can make you do anything. If she knows you are very sensitive to crying, she bursts into tears. If you don't get me this, I'm going to die. Do you remember a man in the Bible called Samson? He got to marry a lady, and the lady asked him to do something that he refused to do because he didn't believe in it. The lady wept for seven days and seven nights until Samson broke down and did it. That's manipulation. I'm twisting strategies. So when you're married, your spouse can manipulate you, your children can manipulate you, your, spa, your, your siblings can manipulate you. Even your in-laws can manipulate you. When they, know you don't, when they know you don't want to do something, they try to get you to do it on their own terms. It will favor them. You never get to get anything out of it. So you want to go somewhere with your husband and he doesn't want to go. He wants to go somewhere else. And he ends up telling you to drive. He knows you don't like driving. And if he tells you to drive, you will not go. So he says, oh, I'm very tired. Can you please drive? Please, please, please. But, you know, but I can't drive. What is he doing? He's manipulating you. So what do we do? Like I said some episodes ago, you can't change a manipulator. The only thing you can do is cut down on your being vulnerable. Tighten your seat belt. Strengthen your weak, the weak parts of the chain. Maybe you like spending money. Cut it down. Maybe you believe everybody so easily because you know you trust people easily. Begin to bring out your antenna. 
You see, I'm very simple. I'm unassuming. Yeah, it's good to be unassuming. But when you meet a manipulator, you can't afford to be unassuming because the manipulator takes that as a weakness and gets into your life and ruins your life. Do you have any questions you want to ask me? Every Saturday and Sunday at 6 p.m., I'm right on this channel. manipulation. If you want a new issue, you can tell me in advance so I can talk about that very soon. This topic has been on relationship. I want you to examine yourself and find out whether you are a manipulator or do you are manipulated. How do you do this? Ask yourself, is it easy for people to manipulate me? Do I have such strange soft spots that I preyed upon every time? Think of your last relationship. Think of the last person you were close to. Think of the last person that duped you, the last person that raped you, the last person that took advantage of you, the last person that took your money and ran away. Why did they do this to you? Maybe you are easily manipulated. Did you find yourself in any of those shoes? Send me a text. An SMS to 08072 and I will reply you. Or you can send the SMS to 08171. Nine 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 eight 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 zero eight one seven one nine 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 eight eight eight, and I will get to answer your text message till I come across your way again next time. This is Doctor B, Shepherd of the Shattered, Bishop of the Broken. I listen to people. And I help them get out from where they are. Even if it's a big hole, get out and rediscover their lives. Nothing should pull you down. Nothing should frustrate your life. With God, all things are possible. Go into partnership with God and they'll give you the wisdom to win battles. Till I come your way again next time, have a great week ahead. Be good. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Thank you.